I've often said it'd be amazing to have a shitload of money and be able to do whatever I want at any moment. But you know what? It doesn't matter how much money you got. We're all human. Every person on this planet that we know of is human. We're capable of doing some stupid stuff, making mistakes. And if we got bad things, bad thoughts in our mind, no amount of money is going to change that. And that's just the bottom line. So when it comes to your personal life behind closed doors, if you're doing some stupid, crazy, illegal shit, eventually you're going to go down. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back, music lovers, all music lovers, but especially my rock music lovers. That's right. This is a rock channel. But hey, we talk about everything. It doesn't matter. And in this case, we're talking about something very big. Now, we're talking about Diddy today, his connection to the rock world. Is there an equivalent to Diddy in the rock world? There are a couple people that come very damn close, but they weren't to the stature that he is in the music world, at least in his genre, hip hop. Now, Diddy definitely made a name for himself, discovering the likes of Biggie Smalls, Mary J. Blige. Those two are two amazing artists, went on to have great careers. Obviously, Biggie's was cut short. But when you're sitting in a Brooklyn detention center and you're being linked to crimes, well, sex trafficking, racketeering, transportation to engage in prostitution, those are some heavy crimes. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Diddy. Because he's sitting there right now and he's have well, he's facing there was just 120 new sexual assault allegations that came out. This was just yesterday. That's added on top of what was already going on. This dudes he's in some hot water to say the least. But I'll say this. If if, if everything's true that's being said about him, he's got everything on video that he's ever done. I doubt everything he's ever done, but I'm sure he's got quite a few things on videotape that will put a lot of other people in just as big a hot water. And, and, and when you hear celebrities' names, especially people you admire and respect, thought were good people because we don't know celebrities. We only know what we see. And you think they're good people and you start hearing their name linked to stuff like this. Man, it's going to be a crazy next couple of months when we start finding out what's really going on in this case. But when it comes to Diddy, Diddy really made a name for himself as an individual. Not just being a record producer, a record executive, or a rapper. As a person, when he started linking himself with the world of rock and roll. Obviously, his first big connection to rock and roll was in 1997. We had lost Biggie Smalls. He did one of the biggest songs of that year, and it was in dedication to Biggie. And him and Faith Evans, it was a beautiful song. So, when you hear the song, Every Breath You Take, by the police, you know that's one of the greatest songs of the 80s. Fast forward to 1997, you hear the song, I'll Be Missing You, in dedication to Biggie. And obviously, if you didn't know who the police were, you just think it's a, it's a beautiful song. Great dedication. They did great by him. It was a huge song. If you knew who the police were, you hear that and you're like, what the hell are they doing? They stole their song. Well, sampling is nothing new. Since hip-hop started in the 80s, sampling rock music is, is, is it's just nothing new. Period. I'll, I'll put it like that. I can't think of nothing any more intellectual to say than that. But, you know, you, you think about when he sampled Every Breath You Take from the police and put it in uh, one of the biggest songs of that year. It was a great combination, and Sting even joined him on stage at one of the Video Music Awards and and sang along with it. It was great. They had a business, you know, relationship there. Whatever Diddy was paying him, I've heard so many different things. I'm not going to get into that because two thousand dollars a day is the most common theme said, and both guys have kind of, you know, said that that was the case. But then I've heard five thousand dollars a day. I've heard three thousand dollars a day. I've heard that he don't even pay him no more, and some say that he still does. So it doesn't matter. It was a great song in 1997. And then you fast forward the next year into 1998. He did a little more sampling of rock music when he sampled Led Zeppelin's Cashmere. He did the song Come With Me for the Godzilla soundtrack, the Godzilla movie that came out that year. My favorite Godzilla movie. That is the best one in 1998, in my opinion. And he did that for the soundtrack, Come With Me, and even in the music video, he has Jimmy Page there playing the guitar. It, it was absolutely awesome. So back to back years, he sampled two rock and roll songs and it really put his name out there. Puff Daddy was big because at that time he was Puff Daddy, he wasn't Diddy. But two of the greatest rock songs, one from the 70s, one from the 80s, he sampled them and he got a lot of notice for it. When you talk about celebrities kind of being portrayed a lot bigger than we would if we did any type of crime, and they're celebrities, so they're going to be put out there. It's going to be blasted all over the internet. It's going to be on the cover of every magazine that still exists. It's just going to be a lot larger than it would be if, say, you did it or I did it. And now when you think about Dave Grohl, lead singer for the Foo Fighters, former drummer for Nirvana, 
you know, right now he's got that situation where he's got a cheating scam going on, cheating on his wife, and it's said that he's cheated on her multiple times over the years. And again, that's not anything too crazy, but the fact that he's a celebrity, it's a little more amplified. But I don't look at that as nothing too crazy. You know, women cheat on their husbands, men cheat on their wives. You know, just sometimes it gets to that point, you know, and some people go through a whole marriage their whole life and never do that to each other, and that's great. You know, it just is what it is. It happens. But it's not nothing too crazy to me. Unfortunate for her, but it happened. Why it happened doesn't matter. It's none of our business. I'm more comp what Diddy's doing to something like Ian Watkins, former lead singer of The Lost Prophets. This guy's currently sitting in prison, and he's going to be there for a while for multiple sexual child abuse cases. I mean, it's over, I think, over 13 different cases. I did a video about Ian Watkins. When you're done watching this, go check it out. I think I did a very good job. It's a good video. It really kind of explains what happened with that situation. But that dude was assaulting children under the age of 13, some under the age of 10. You know, it's it's horrible what this guy was doing. And you look at the Lost Prophets as a band and see them and like their music. Then to hear something like that, it's like, how do you go from enjoying somebody in something to completely thinking they're sick and disturbed in the head and, and like nothing that they stand for anymore. That's the human element. And what's going on with Didi right now, it's hard to take out that that element of fandom. But there are still people out there supporting him. I just don't see how he could. Example is As I Lay Dying frontman Tim Lambesis. Now this guy went out in 2013 and he had, well, people got wind that he was trying to hire a hitman on his wife. She was estranged from him. And he was willing to pay up to $20,000 on it, which in fact is what he agreed to, to a gentleman to do this. But he didn't realize the gentleman was a detective undercover. So he ended up getting in trouble for that. Went to jail, went to prison, whatever. But, you know, that right there is a crazy situation. But it happens a lot, right? And whether you're a celebrity or not, we've heard about it. And in fact, it does actually happen. It's not always where it gets caught like this before it actually happens. There's many times where a spouse has hired somebody to kill their husband or wife. For whatever reason, it's crazy shit. That's the world we live in. Obviously, when he got out of prison, you know, he made up with the guys in the band as I then continued, got some new albums. Okay. But that is a huge example of celebrity being put out there as, well, a little different than we would. But you get what I'm saying. That's a huge deal. But the fact that he's a celebrity, a front man for an awesome, awesome band, you know, you're going to hear about it and think about him in a different light and the situation different than you would if you read a newspaper about an individual you do not know it's just a crazy thing but with diddy it's it's just a lot different you cannot look at the guy the same there are all those fanatics out there i said it already they're gonna stand by him they're saying free him let him out he's not he's not guilty <laughs> how the how the hell can you say it? they got a long list of evidence we haven't seen it but I don't think they would have picked them up unless they were ready, unless they thought they had a case, which in the end really doesn't mean they do. You look at OJ, I think they had a pretty strong case against him. Didn't matter. Good lawyers, a lot of money, you get out of a situation. Will that be the same for Diddy? I don't know. But man, I know one thing, here in the next few months, it's going to be some crazy, crazy shit when we see what happens. What we know is this is going to be a story. 10, 20, 30 years from now, that we'll always look back and say, man, do you remember when Diddy got in trouble for this? We don't know what's going to happen after that, but 10, 20, 30 years from now, we'll know the second part to this story. Right now, we're waiting for that second part. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know who else is going to go down. But we do know one thing. Diddy can thank rock and roll music for really helping jumpstart his career. Yes, he was behind the scenes for two amazing artists in the early 90s may have helped his career without the help of, well, you know, fate tragically striking with Biggie and then sampling two of the most amazing rock songs in the history. It still could have happened, but it played out how it did. You know, thanking the police for their amazing song, Every Breath You Take. We thank Led Zeppelin for Cashmere and one of their amazing songs in a long list of catalog that has amazing songs. Did he sample two great ones? He was smart. He knew what he was doing. Now, when it comes to what Diddy's doing in real time, real life, and other situations that happen with rock and roll artists or other celebrities in general, when people step out of bounds and do something crazy, it's, it's going to be known and it's 
it's going to be out there and people are going to look at it a lot different. All eyes will be on that because it's a celebrity, but doesn't mean they should be treated any different. They shouldn't get any more fair treatment than the next individual that did the exact same thing. You see what they've done to a lot of these big organized crime leaders. Right now, you can kind of throw Diddy in that conversation. Consider him to be that. doesn't matter what he did in his career. What was he doing? What did you go arrest him for? That's how you got to treat him. Everything else, block it out. Bottom line. That's what I expect. If the dude gets proven to be innocent and gets out of it, great. If he goes down for a long, long time along with other people, hey, <laughs> that's what was supposed to happen because you fuck up, you got to pay the price, right? Anyway, till next time, go out there and take care of your friends and family. Do something amazing. Try to stay away from doing illegal, crazy, stupid shit and leaving yourself open and vulnerable to going to jail for a long, long time. Unless you really don't care, which I guarantee you think you don't until you're sitting behind those bars. Trust me, you ain't going to have no fun at all. Anyway, till next time, take care of yourself. I'm out.